So today I'd like to introduce the concept of energy. And to do so, I'm going to start with a very simple demonstration. You see, by definition, energy is the capacity to do work. I'm going to give you an example of doing work, and then we'll talk about energy again. Are you ready? Nothing up my sleeves. I just did some work. Catch that. I just did some work. I'm going to do some more work. Just did some work. Now, let's reset the clock here. I'm not going to do any work this time. Watch. No work done. I'm not going to do any work this time either. No work. So, what's the difference in those two cases that I just gave you? Why was this work? But then if I did that afterwards, I hadn't done any work. Well, by definition, work is the application of a force resulting in a displacement. Now, there are two different types of forces. There are pushing and pulling forces. So, when I touch this book, I did apply a force and when it changed from this location to that location, it was displaced. So by application of a force, I displaced this object. Therefore, that's the definition of work. And energy is the capacity to do that kind of work. And there are two types, kinetic and potential. Perhaps the easiest one to understand is kinetic energy, because by definition, kinetic energy is the energy of motion. Moving objects have the capacity to apply a force to an object and displace it. And instead of saying applying a force and displacing it, let's just think of it as shoving stuff around. And a moving object can definitely shove stuff around. Example, this book will start to move when I let go of it. Perhaps you saw the papers flap to the side. Perhaps you heard a noise. And of course, a noise is a wave. And waves are energy being transferred, in this case from the book to your ear. The molecules in the room, in the air around me, started to vibrate and move because of the moving book. You go to play pool, when you fire that billiard ball and it hits other balls, the motion of the ball has the capacity to shove other stuff around. So clearly moving objects have that capacity to shove stuff around. They have what's called kinetic energy, energy of motion. Now, potential is harder to understand. If I had a dollar for every time I heard a teacher define it as uh, stored energy. Uh, I'd be rich. I wouldn't be doing this right now. But um, what is stored energy? I don't get it. How do you store the ability to shove stuff around? Well, in fact, you need a couple of things if you want potential energy. One thing you need is some sort of attraction or some sort of repulsion. You can't have the capacity to shove stuff around unless there are attractions or repulsions between objects, masses. Another thing that you're going to need is the correct position of the two objects that attract or repel. Because to have this potential to shove stuff around, potential energy, you have to have some kind of attraction or repulsion, and the masses that are attracting or repelling have to be positioned in a very specific way. Best example I can give you again with this book. Right now, if we consider the table to be the Earth's surface, even though that could fall a little bit further than the table, but the table is supporting the book right now, the book is attracted to the center of the Earth because the book has mass, the Earth has mass, and any two masses experience a gravitational attraction for one another. So this book has an attraction for the center of the earth. 
Now, it does not have gravitational potential, the ability to shove stuff around yet. And that's because it's positioned right next to, as close as it can get to the mass to which it's attracted. It doesn't have the right position to have potential. However, if I separate the book from that to which it's attracted, the Earth, I have given it a position such that it has potential energy. It has now the capacity to shove stuff around. And of course, if I let the book go, we will see that potential energy become kinetic energy, energy of motion. The book will start to move towards the thing to which it's attracted. And once again, I heard it shove stuff around. So yes, if you have an attraction, you need to reposition the two masses that attract apart from one another in order for them to have potential energy. On the other hand, if you have two masses that repel each other, and such would be the case of, say, protons, positively charged nucleons in the center of the nucleus. If you had positively charged particles, because they have similar charge, they repel. Therefore, if they're far apart from each other, they don't have the capacity to shove stuff around. However, if objects repel one another and you push them closer together, such as similarly charged particles or the same ends, polar ends of two magnets, the closer they get, the more they repel. And when they are positioned right next to each other, they have their maximum potential the maximum ability to shove stuff around. Because if you let go, once again, the potential becomes kinetic. The particles would fly off in opposite directions. And in so doing, the potential is released, but you can't create or destroy energy, so it is converted to kinetic energy, energy of motion. So, I like to think of potential as the energy of positioning due to attractions and repulsions to things that are attracted and repelled, depending upon how they're positioned with respect to each other, will determine whether or not they have that capacity to convert that potential, that energy of position, into energy of motion, kinetic energy. And that's the short version of kinetic and potential energy.